Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. I wanted to talk about which M1 Mac you should buy if you're looking at them and you're interested. I've had so many conversations with people in the comment section of the video that I released on the launch day of the new M1 chip Max. And so I wanted to do a follow-up video answering some questions uh, so that people can see these answers because they kind of get lost sometimes down in the comment section. So of course, Apple released some new M1 chip Macs, uh, mainly their lower end Macs on uh, both their laptop and of course the Mac mini, but they're here and this is the future of, of the Mac computer. So what should we do with that? Well. This is the first generation. In the video that I released yesterday, I talked about maybe some reasons why you should wait and not purchase one now. But if you're in that camp where it's time for an upgrade or it's time to you know refresh the computer that you're currently using, which one should you buy? Typically, you 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 want to buy towards the beginning of the new product cycle, so uh, that you're not buying towards the end of it when there might be a new version coming out. So we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, these, these Macs that are available and what some of the differences are. Because if you look at the specs, uh, kind of the bird's eye view of the specs, they don't look much different as far as the different options. So let's start with the MacBook Air. The MacBook Air now is only available in the M1 chip unless you find a retailer that is selling an older version of it. And so there are two different options that they have and there are some options within those options that you can configure. So the cheaper of the options comes with an eight core CPU and a seven core GPU. Now it's supposed to be eight core and eight core, but probably due to some issues with performance that they had on the chips, they bend one of those and disabled one of those cores and brought it down to seven. I see this as a, a way that Apple is probably going to have those different price tiers for different performance, uh, a six core or an eight core or something like that. A seven core is a really weird number. So with that looking like they're doing some sort of binning there and disabling of cores, I don't really like that. For a small price bump, you can of course get the full eight cores and that is the option that I would go with. I personally don't like uh, things being disabled on my devices, especially if it's there, uh, but there might be some sort of an issue with that chip in production or whatnot, and that's why they decided to disable that. I talked a little bit about this in the video that I put out yesterday. So I would definitely go with the higher end MacBook Air. Uh, now let's talk about the RAM, and uh, the RAM is an interesting issue because now the RAM memory is on board with the M1 chip. This chip does it all. There was a cool little animation where they were like, here's what a motherboard looked like with all of the different chips, and we brought them all into one, into this amazing SOC chip, and everything is there in one. While that's cool, and it's neat technology, and yes, it probably is the future, maybe even for AMD and Intel, the uh, the unified RAM means that that is all on one chip. There is no way of upgrading this, and Apple has moved away from upgradable memory and stuff like that for a while anyway, so this is not like it's anything new. It's just that it's all on one chip, which means there's no way possible for you to upgrade this. You'd have to sell your laptop and buy a new one. Now, eight gigabytes of RAM in the year 2020 is not much RAM memory for doing a whole lot. If you're basically buying this machine to browse the internet and maybe send off some email and that's about it, then probably the entry-level MacBook Air will be plenty powerful enough for you. But if you're gonna use any sort of software over and above that, maybe you're the type of person like me who ends up having like eight to 10 tabs opened in their browser with their email client and a few other applications going, you are definitely going to want to get the 16 gigabyte option. I have not been able to survive on less than 16 gigabytes for quite some time. And even though I'm sure there are gonna be some performance enhancements, being that everything is on one chip, just like how the iPhone doesn't have to have as much memory as an Android phone because it's all an integrated chip on the iPhone and, and it might be on Android as well, but on the iPhone, they seem to get away with doing a lot more uh, with a lot less. And so I'm hoping that that also translates to the Mac, but I wouldn't risk it. I would go with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. So even if you are being price conscious here and you, you go with the uh, entry level uh, MacBook Air, 
with the eight core CPU and the seven core GPU, I highly recommend upgrading to the 16 gigabytes of RAM. And then of course the storage capacity, that is also something that is not interchangeable. You can't take that hard drive, that solid state drive out and put a new one in. So you're gonna have to go with the amount of storage that you think you're gonna need. Of course you have Thunderbolt ports on the side so that you can attach external storage, but if you attach too many things, you're not gonna be able to charge your laptop at the same time. You only have two Thunderbolt ports, so maybe one for charging, one for your external hard drive, and that is it. So I recommend thinking about that when deciding here. So with the higher end MacBook Air, once you start to configure it out by adding 16 gigs of memory and maybe even a little bit more storage, you are at, you know, around $2,000. So if you max out the MacBook Air, $2,000 is the price point. And then of course, if you go over to the MacBook Pro 13 inch, there are a few little things that you're going to gain and they might be little, they might be big to you uh, if you go MacBook Pro. Now, never before have we seen the lines so close together with a MacBook Air and a MacBook Pro in my personal opinion, but with this MacBook Pro, there are a few things that you are getting over and above what the MacBook Air uh, would get. So the 13 inch with the M1 chip, you are getting a brighter display. So instead of 400 nits, you're getting 500 nits brightness display. You're getting the touch bar. So if you use the touch bar for anything, I personally don't. I think it's kind of a waste of space. I would rather have a, a function row of keys rather than the touch bar, but it is uh, interesting and maybe useful depending on what it is that you do. So there's also the touch bar as well. And uh, so with the increased battery size, you're gonna get a lot more lifespan out of your laptop as well. So if you're going for longevity, the battery life that you're gonna get out of the MacBook Pro 13 inch is a bit more than you're gonna get out of the MacBook Air, which uh, may work out to be really great for you. There's still only two Thunderbolt ports on both of these. There's still only the M1 chip with the eight core GPU, eight core CPU, and a total 16 core neural engine. Uh, RAM is only available at eight or 16, and then of course you can configure the hard drive up a little bit as well. So the price of a MacBook Pro, if you went with the higher end MacBook Pro 13 inch, uh, you can add in the 16 gigs of memory, and add in, I'd say maybe around, somewhere in between one terabyte and two terabytes is where that $2,000 falls. So you're not paying too much more for a MacBook Pro 13 inch and you're getting the bigger battery, you're getting the brighter display, a little bit heftier of a laptop, not by much, but a little bit heftier of a laptop, and uh, of course the touch bar as well. So with that said, those might be things that tip you over to spend an extra, you know, 100 or $200 in order to get the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now, things to consider, and this might end up needing to be a whole nother video going into this topic, but there are a lot of things that we would do as our Macs that kind of were Intel specific. For example, if you ran Windows on your Mac and you utilize Bootcamp to load Windows uh, rather than loading Mac OS, you're not gonna be able to do that on these new ARM-based Macs. These M1 chips are not gonna support that. That requires an Intel chip in order to make that happen. You might be able to use the Parallels for Mac app that allow you, while you're already in uh, Mac OS, to run Parallels and open up Windows, but imagine how tough that's gonna be in a environment of eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM. And also we will definitely need to wait to see what Parallels does with that app, uh, with their application to see if they're gonna make it universal and how well that performs on a system like this. So if you utilize Windows on a Mac, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. There are also other things that are being kind of taken away, I guess, or, or maybe they're just not ready or not implemented with this system yet. Uh, if you'd like a video going more in depth on some of those things, definitely let me know and I'll produce another video. I didn't want to get too into the weeds in this video. I just wanted to give you some thoughts and ideas on which Mac you should probably buy based on what's important to you. So just to recap, if you are just getting a Mac for light computer use, you want something that's a little bit more than a Chromebook, but uh, of course is a Mac, then the entry-level MacBook Air 
there is going to be perfect for you. If you want something a little more future proof that has a little bit more performance uh, so that you can do a little bit of heavier lifting if you need to open up a few more applications, stuff like that, then you're definitely going to need either the higher end MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM or jump over to the MacBook Pro 13 inch with the 16 gigs of RAM. I wouldn't even recommend buying the eight gigabyte version of uh, the MacBook uh, the MacBook Pro 13 at all. A laptop that has the word Pro in it that has eight gigabytes of RAM is not a Pro laptop by any means. I don't even know why they are offering such a small amount of memory. Hopefully that will change soon. But that's gonna do it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that it helped you make a decision. If it did, use the links down in the description below to make your purchase. It helps support the channel here. And uh, of course, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. Click that thumbs up if the video was helpful. Click that subscribe button to be notified when I put out new videos, but that's going to do it for today. Thanks a lot.